Okay. All right. All right. So, greetings, Earthlings. Uh, you're now tuned in to the sound of a crowd. And you already know this is the show we chat with colorful creatives and entrepreneurs from a gardening background or special interest, bringing you one step closer to a crowd. The guest I have for you today goes by the name of James Mercer. Uh -uh. James Mercer <laughs> is one of my dudes. I've known this guy for such a while. Uh, just a little bit of background of James. Uh, he's a Ghanaian, straight out of South London, born in the UK, right? Yes, that's correct. <laughs> yeah, so you, so you lived your whole life apart from five years in, in, uh, in London. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I actually know James from university. Funny yeah. enough, he was one of the first few first few people I've met at university, if not the first person. It was like first. First, yeah. Maybe first. Mad. And I think there was a website, right? Called, yeah. um, was it called You Go Further or something? I don't even remember. I remember there's a website. I don't remember what the name was, but I remember <laughs> what I spoke to you. <laughs> this guy's got a new Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember. You were excited. I was talking to you I, about that all the time. I was excited, man. I was just yeah. excited because I'd never experienced anything like you before, before, um, before then. But yeah, James was the first person I met at university. Um, you know, I met him and then, yeah, I guess we kind of like, uh, you know, I was in and out of his life in university. But anyway, um, you know, how many years later? We're still here. And we were still cool, which is, wow. which is good. 15 years. 15 years. Has it been that long? When did we start? 2008? It's not 15 years. No, but it's about it's 12 years. 12 years. Okay. That's still 12, 15, 12, 15 years. Still crazy. Now, I mean, like, it's 12 years, but it's still, <laughs> still, like, it still feels like 15. Still, it's yeah. still, it's still crazy. It's still crazy. Yeah. So about 12 years, um, 12 years ago, I met this guy, and now, you know, we're now doing podcasts, which is great. But yeah, James Mercer, he's a, he's a top guy. Do not be uh, deceived. This guy is an intelligent, intelligent young man. Um, so he went to school in Cape Coast. He went to Infanta Bim. Infanta Bim. Oh, I'm Motri. <laughs> uh, so, you know, just like my brother here, you know, I've also gone to school in Ghana, so he knows what it is. Um, so, <laughs> so he went to a school named Infanta Bim, you know, straight out of Cape Coast. If you don't know Infanta Bim, guys, very famous senior secondary school in Ghana, and uh, uh, his alumni. So Kofi got Kofi Annan, Kofi Busia, Arthur Watton, William Oforiata. Uh, I can't pronounce the rest actually. Pronounce the others. Pronounce me. <laughs> Satsu. How, how do you pronounce that? You know, you know the you know the rapper Manifest. Vaguely. Yeah, that's his father. That he oh, went to the as well. Yeah, no yeah. Way. And his father was like um. He's he's just he was involved in that the government and that sort of stuff. Mm. Really, mm. It's an interesting story about that. But I don't really know. Okay. I, well, I know it, but I don't know it like that. So <laughs> I'm, not gonna, I'm yeah. gonna let everybody do their own research and find out for themselves. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So I mean, that is a show-stopping list of uh, yeah. Coffee, he's a coffee Allen, gone. Yeah. Coffee, he's a coffee Allen. Yeah, rest the rest. He, he's 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 gone, right? Rest yeah. the peace, man, 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 man. And then Casey Hayford as well. Uh, Majid Mikel. That's so actor, many of yeah, He's an actor. Yeah. Is he? Yeah. Ah, okay. Oh yeah, he is. He is Casey Hayford. Yeah, he's an actor. Mm. I don't know. Casey Hayford. No, not um, Casey Hayford. Sorry. Um, Magic. Ma Magic. Yeah. Michelle, Casey I didn't like Magic. Magic guy. Casey Hayford did something else. I think he was like a historian, right? No, that's his. That's his great grandson. Is it? Yeah. No, no I, I think, think so. so. The actual original Casey Hayford. Mm. I can't remember what he did, but he's like someone that's very important for Ghana. Yeah, he did something very important. I remember, I remember learning about him now yeah. when I was when I was in school in Ghana. Mm. Yeah, he did something quite profound. But yeah, um, so James has been to a very prominent school. So obviously he's not a, uh, you know, a typical black man. He's an educated black man, which is important in this day and age. <laughs> and um, yeah, um, thank you very much. And he didn't go to his traditional family school, which is a Disadol College. Yeah, um, a Disadol College. Trying to remember what it is. That's in, I think that's in uh, Kingsley okay, as well. well. Yeah, it's like yeah. black and white. Shout out to, yeah, shout out to Kingsley. I think he went to the he went yeah. to uh, this little college. That's my uh, my neighbour in Ghana. Shout out to Kingsley. Okay, okay. And, um, that, that school is yeah, like if someone has my surname, they will usually go to either side of the family. Mm -hmm. so that is 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 it's something that is just done in my family. My dad didn't go there, but like pretty much all of his brothers went there. Okay, and my brother went there too. Okay, yeah. so they all kind of your, your family kind of followed the kind of Cape Coast um, schooling kind of because Cape Coast Cape Coast is known. I mean, let's let's yeah. be let's face it, James. Cape Coast is known for its uh, 
education. Education, yeah. Yeah, because the great university Wesley, as well. Wesley Girl High School, Fancy mm-hmm. Fair, Desidel. What else? I'm sure there's others there as yeah. well. Yeah, Holy Co. I'm um, sorry, Holy, Holy Child. Holy Child. <laughs> <laughs> Call it the name, you know. Holy Child. Um, and um, oh, no, my cousin's going to cast me for anything. Um, St. Augustine's. St. Augustine's. Yeah, yeah, that's the Catholic school. Uh-huh. So, the Fancy Game is a Methodist school. Mm-hmm. At the side is a Anglican school. Yeah. St. Augustine's is a Catholic school. Ah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then, um, uh, when it comes to the girls, mm-hmm. um, there's a Fancy Man. Which is man. not exactly in Cape Coast, but it's near Cape Coast, so it seems like a Cape Coast school. Mm. And if Fancy Man is the like, Anglican school, mm. um, Holy Child is the Catholic school, Catholic school. and Wesley Girls mm-hmm. is the Methodist school. Methodist school, yeah. Wow. So Wesley Girls is like the girls' school for Fancy Man. Mm. So if we'll do anything with a girls' school, we'll do it with Wesley Girls. <laughs> and I, you see the Wesley Girls girls there. <laughs> Excited. How old? How old were you? Think when when you do you remember how old you were when, when you were? Um, yeah. To pimp. You must have been yeah. like maybe 14, 13, 14? Yeah. I was yeah. thirteen. I was the youngest there. Like, yeah. I was. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did you did you want? Let's face it. I mean, I've even finished the introduction, but yeah. anyway, I'm, we're gonna go this love. It's good. Did you did you did you actually want to go to senior secondary school in Ghana? Because so, I when I finished yeah. Morningstar in Accra, like yeah. Cantonment. I wanted to. I wanted out. I'm like, yeah. I'm, I'm essing out back to run. This was 2004, because at that time, obviously Ghana was at a certain point. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't what it is now, but yeah. um, I didn't appreciate it as much. Mm. I just wanted to go back to London. So I had about three years. But now. I didn't finish. You didn't finish. Nah. Yeah. Hey. Charlie, yeah. what did you do? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, did, I wanted to come home. I wanted to come home. Like, um, okay. only on the hindsight that. I feel the comfort. Like, there's probably times in my life where like, I didn't have a, such a great relationship with God at all. Mm-hmm. That, in all honesty. Same, like, same yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, same here. And, yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot of people that actually... It's that funny, it's funny, how, it's funny how the, the, how the tides have, have turned, doesn't it? It's true. Um, maybe it's a thing of like, you think, you know, yeah, I've spent so much time in that country and like, to the point where that country became something that was a day-to-day for me. So it's the only other country other than this country that has yeah. been a day-to-day for me. So therefore, I just, I feel some kind of tie towards it anyway, especially when things are getting stressful here. I feel like, you know what, like there is, and there's also a sense of freedom that you feel in Ghana that you, I don't think it's possible to feel here. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So an interesting story is I remember when I first when just seeing my parents in Ghana, like seeing the way they behave in Ghana, they behave completely differently to the way they behave here. Because you know that's where they were children. So therefore that childness can come out, if that makes sense. Yeah. Whereas here they just worked all the time, stressed, you know what I mean? It's just all the time. But out there that they're different. So for example, like I feel like in Ghana, the way that like, when you're here, you have to you have the pressure of being you have to live up to something. You know, like you're, you're say I'm black male, yeah, mm-hmm. so black male in uh, South London, generally. Yeah. Um, you need to come. I'm not saying you, like in a sense that if you don't look after yourself, it's dangerous. You get what I mean? If yeah. you don't come across in a certain way and make sure you're looking after yourself, yeah. You could become a victim. Mm. Whereas in Ghana, like a person can truly be themselves. You know, like it could be anything. So if someone's Absolutely. someone's goofy, they can be goofy in yeah. Ghana. They're just goofy. It's funny. You yeah. know, someone wants to be a nerd. They can go out there and be a nerd. Yeah. Someone wants to be um, a fool buffoon. They can go out there and be a buffoon. Yeah. And I just feel like things there just aren't. When people talk, things aren't taken as personally. Like you can just discuss things and just move on. Mm-hmm. Like um, an instance that I was I was talking about when I got there. Mm-hmm. Like when I'm driving in the UK, if yeah. someone just goes near my car, yeah, I feel anger for at least a couple hours after that's happened. It's like oh, like a near miss. But then you get to Ghana and you see the roads, and it's just chaos. Yeah, it's chaos. <laughs> someone, will, yeah, someone will chip a car. Someone will be, they'll be angry for like five seconds. And after that, they just get over it quickly. quickly. 
so quickly and it's just like he's carrying on being the same person you were before chatting and it's like ah uh, like you can't worry and stress yourself about these things yeah that's and that's more stress free yeah and it's more stress it's true and i don't think people i don't think people understand it until they're there mm -hmm. and you don't understand how stress free actually just the culture and how things are until you're actually there because it's like a whole weight comes off your shoulders even when i was young and mm -hmm. at that age yeah i like, I, I wouldn't even say I had the best experience when I was younger. Yeah. I had a good experience in school, but my whole experience in school, actually, no, I had some good experiences, but there were some experiences that weren't great. Yeah. I still felt a huge weight off my shoulders as I walked into the country and just being around there. A weight that I probably the last time I felt off my shoulders was the last time I went there. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's, yeah. I mean, that's Ghana for you, isn't it? I mean, it's just freedom, isn't it? Freedom and justice is the, uh, you know, the, 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 the country's motto, isn't it? You know, mm -hmm. The country's slogan, what, what, what have you. And that's what you hear people say all the time. That's gone for you. Yeah. They say that every single time. Like, no matter what happens, they say, oh, that's gone yeah. for you. I can go out. I mean, I love gone. I mean, I can walk outside my house and just, like, wear anything, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And not feel a thing. Yeah. And I can feel like I'm without the dress of certain standards, mm -hmm. just to step outside. Just however I want. I didn't even get to that. I didn't even get to that. <laughs> That's another thing as well. Yeah. Like, even, okay, dress at a certain standard. That's one thing. You can dress however you want and just go to the shop and do whatever you want. Yeah. But also the comfort in how you can dress, like wearing shorts yeah. and t shirts and sandals, not all the slit little sliders if you want, you know? Yeah. Or chalewate if you want to like you know? Like just That's wearing it. it just to go around. That's and it's just so. Comfortable, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. Comfortable, like you could, you could just sit down outside. Yeah. Like, sometimes in here, you, like in this country, you spend a lot of time indoors. You do, yeah. Because yeah. of the way it is, we don't have the massive compounds. We don't have like all of this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Like it's not even just the, like even down to the that. Sorry about that. The compounds and that. Not even just the compounds. It's just the fact that it's just cold sometimes, mm. and it's just. Like it might yeah. be raining, yeah. or it just might be gloomy, or you might necessarily think it's dangerous. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, for if you've got kids and that sort of stuff, you don't want them outside at certain times or doing certain things. Whereas, all down on that, when you, like, even in the morning, yeah, you can't, you can't even stay in bed. <laughs> it's so hot, you just want to get up. And you want to get up. You want to seize the day. And the sun, and the sun wakes you up. Six a.m. The sun yeah. is out. You know, yeah. depending on where you're living, you might even hear some, you know, cockles or whatever. Yeah. You, up, you understand? And yeah, you just feel happy, sun hitting you with that vitamin D, mm -hmm. waking up, sun is shining, feeling good, just want to get up and start yeah. the day. Yeah, mm -hmm. whereas like, a lot of times here in the mornings, yeah, it's, it's quite hard to get up. <laughs> That's quite, I know a lot of people yeah. relate to that, it is, it's quite difficult to get up. In the yeah, I guess so. It's quite difficult to get up in the morning in the UK, I guess. I mean, in other countries, I guess, in Europe. But yeah, that's the thing with Ghana. I mean, Ghana can be whatever you want it to be. That um, you can live stress free, you don't have to worry about certain bills, mm. especially if you have your own place. Um, you don't have to worry about a mortgage, especially if you have your own place. Mm -hmm. You understand? Um, mm -hmm. There's no real reason to kind of you know, worry in Ghana because yeah. everything's usually taken care of. The thing is that there are, there are like, to be fair, there are worries for some people. You turn this down? You want to turn the AC down? You good? Uh, no, I'm good. I'm good. There are some worries, yeah, for... Are you cold? I'm, I think I'm a little bit cold. Ah, I should have turned down a bit, yeah. Yeah, there are some worries for some people, like... And there were people in Ghana that, like, obviously when I was in school and that mm. sort of stuff, there were people that I've met, people I came across, yeah, and their lives are not as fortunate. Yeah. So there are, like, worries. Some people see it as... Some people find Ghana stressful. They find it... Like, like there are people that feel that way. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But True. True. in the end of the day, like... Yeah. If you are in a fortunate position, it gives us a chance to make some sort of a difference. Mm. Like Ghana does have an increase in middle class. Yeah. When I was in, when I went to school in Ghana, mm -hmm. if I saw a dog, it was usually a guard dog or just a guard dog, like for a house. Now I went to Ghana, I'm seeing people walking poodles and that sort of stuff. <laughs> I things are really changing. Here. Things are changing. Yeah. This is so it's mad. There's a lot more pets. I mean, yeah. there's a lot more people taking on pets in Ghana. Yeah. 
as well as I mean dogs, dogs, cats, whatever you name it. Um, they used to be kind of like just security. Because mm. in Ghana they tend to get pets for security, right? Yeah. Like, watch you got watch man, watch yeah. dog, all that yeah. stuff. I mean I've got I've got um, you know, family in Ghana that have you know, killer killer dogs. Killer dogs in there. Oh <laughs> yeah, I mean in <laughs> airport, airport in airport, airport yeah. I mean killer dogs. You yeah, know, you get there, if you jump over the fence it's a wrap. So yeah, it's a wrap, especially yeah. after midnight. It's alright, so don't go there. They're, right. they're not even they're, 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 those dogs are not there that like they're not there to be friendly. Yeah. The only person that can deal with the dog is the is the watch is the watchman. That's the, it. Yeah. The, 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 the person that looks the, the watch yeah. the person that looks after the gate and coming yeah. and out. He's yeah, the only that's person that the dog will not eat. That's the thing, yeah. Even the people who own the house, yeah. It's dicey for them. They don't really know. <laughs> no. And it takes a level of training to to, to, to get there actually. Oh of course. So yeah. So I think, um, I mean, that's the thing, James. I mean, that's one good thing um, you know, I like talking to you because one, re- one good reason why I like talking with you because I think we have a lot in common. I mean, not just the same university and being from Ghana, mm-hmm. but I think we both have, we've both had similar backgrounds and we've both you know, spent our younger years living in Ghana. So we've both seen how Ghana's changed you know, from what, what it was in the past to what it is now. Mm-hmm. And we have a greater appreciation and understanding of that yeah. as well um, so I think that's something that we can both bring to the table oh 100% I'll yeah. say I'll say one thing that we both have is the vision mm. and I think that's the main thing that I'll bring up I think the vision is the main thing because um, having that kind of um, optimism is mm. the only thing that's going to make any difference in it and the only thing that's going to move the country to well, not lead but just move the country to um, uh, its promise where, 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 where we want it to be isn't it yeah. where everybody wants it to be um, myself, when I went to Ghana, when I went to school in Ghana mm-hmm. at the age of thirteen, that yeah. was the first time I ever went to Ghana. Yeah. So I was before that. I was very, it's very UK like. That makes mm-hmm. sense. Yeah. Same. Same here. Yeah. I did. So the, so if you think about it, the relationship between myself and my parents. Yeah. Was very different because I didn't understand how they schooled. I didn't understand how that, like, you know what I mean? There's mm-hmm. a huge disconnect. So yeah. if they're telling me, oh, do this, like, study or do this, yeah. like, I'm just thinking, my friends don't do that. Do you know what I mean? And if I didn't go, I don't know what direction I would be in now, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Because it did let me know the importance of a lot of things. Yeah. And it definitely improved the relationship between myself and my parents. Without yeah. Without a fact. No about a doubt, so not without a fact. <laughs> Do you think were you were you kind of spoiled before you went to Ghana? Did did you have that kind of experience where I mean like me, mm. I mean, definitely I'll put my hand up and say but the prior to moving to Ghana, I was spoiled. Um, I had a saying I wasn't really a studious person, mm. I wasn't into I wasn't very academic, etc. Mm. etc. When I came out from Ghana, I was very academic, mm. um, you know, well taught with manners, you know, mm. very well disciplined. How mm. would you say that? I wouldn't use the words um, spoil, yeah, because I still had a lot of morals, if that makes sense. Mm. But I was a lot more rebellious. Mm. So, so yeah, same. Yeah, same, same. do you know what I mean? So I was, um, I would say, going to Ghana was probably before I was going to Ghana, probably at a crossroads in my life where I was probably choosing: Am I going to be fully rebellious? Or like what? Like I don't know. I, I I don't know what the other side. I didn't know what the other side was then. I just thought, am I going to be fully rebellious? I'm going to that because yeah. I start noticing that you get to school, you start noticing that you know different things, how people are behaving, how people carry themselves. So thinking, oh, you know what? I can do that. I can do. That. You get what I mean? You start yeah. to notice. Don't get yeah. me wrong. When I came back from Ghana, I wasn't an angel. Like there's still mm-hmm. things that I did that, that I'll probably look back and thought, why did I do that? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And there's still things I did years after I look back and think, why did I do that? Mm-hmm. But it's a thing of like, it created a limit. Mm. You get what I mean? So I knew that, okay, I'm not going that far, that there's no way I'm going that far. Do you get what I'm coming from? I get where you're coming from, yeah. So because I had that limit, it enabled me to get to where I am now. Mm. It enabled me to be in a position that I could have, the sky's the limit for me. Mm. So, you know, like, I, that's why I'm grateful for the experience as well. Like, um, also, I didn't know 
Like, if you think about someone coming from the UK, I didn't know the prestigiousness of a school like the fancy thing. I didn't know, like, <laughs> I'm just thinking that's just some school, you know? I'm yeah. not, I didn't, I didn't, well, I appreciated it when I got there, like, I'm yeah. proud and that's and stuff, but, yeah. like, there was, a, there was an element of fear that I'm going there, because it's a lot, like, do you know what I mean? And at the same time as well, like, um, it's boarding school, yeah, and, like, you know, you have to fend for yourself, all that sort of stuff. It's quite a struggle for my dad to actually just get me in there in the first place. So um, I didn't know, but I was excited to go because I'd never been. So I was still mm-hmm. excited. I was still like, you know what? Yeah, I'm, re- I'm ready for the challenge. Let me just see what it's about. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you with boarding school, because I know a lot of people, I mean, kind of, a lot of people from abroad or from the UK, whatever, they kind of um, hold back before of going to boarding school in Ghana because they hear these stories. For example, that was one mm. thing that kind of um, mm. repelled me away from it. Mm. And it took me back to the UK because I didn't want to get bullied. Mm. I didn't want to go through the whole chop box situation where, mm. <laughs> especially because there's no, it's no Ghana International, yeah. it's no Lincoln, it's no yeah. TIS. And, yeah. and I think I think we'll go into those schools a bit later on, actually. Nah, I, I, want to, I want to tell you this whole experience. Okay, man. all right. <laughs> Goes, go on. It's, I'll, I'll be real with you, man. Like, yeah, you're all in it together. Like, yeah. when you're there with your friends, you're in it together. Yeah, like you have your chop box, you got your trunk, you got your, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, but you're, 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 you're <laughs> bucket, like, uh, if I tell you, look, let me tell you, okay, yeah, so it worked out for that. you because I'm hearing stories that when you have your chop box, yeah. you know, your seniors are, are coming with your chop box, yeah, they are. Yeah. Okay. Yep. There we go. Yeah. yeah that's, that's, listen, I don't want that. All, 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 okay. All okay. The, all the things that you heard that happened, yeah, yeah. happened. <laughs> but it's not. It's not that bad. It wasn't that bad, yeah. No, I mean, it was an experience. It was, it was still an experience. Yeah, it's like people. People get scared about it and make it seem like it's it, like. If you see the way, like it's like what I was saying earlier. Yeah? If yeah. you see the way how other people handle it and how they how they deal with it, like, mm-hmm. like I mean, people are traumatized. People are just like. <sighs> Do you know what I mean? You, you just get over it. Like, it, just, it happens, you just get over it. Yeah. And like, them same seniors, yeah, they become your friends too. Yeah. Like, you form a connection and like, you, you become friends with these people. Like, so, as much as I do, like, obviously at the time, I'm, I'm coming from the UK, so, in the UK, we have, I wasn't that great at that banter when I was a kid, but, compared to Ghana, yeah, like, Ghana have a different type of banter. So if you're able to bring in your UK banter as well, yeah, like and you're like because we in in the UK they, we push the limits a bit more. Mm. So you go to Ghana and you're pushing the limits a bit more. With these people, yeah, that they're laughing their head off. They're thinking, well, this guy's cheeky, but yeah. they rate it and they rate it. Yeah, it, it it gets you places. It gets you it, it gets you through like certain seniors that it, they start to think, okay, cool, this guy's okay. alright. Okay, so is that what you're doing, kind of like? Um in senior secondary school, so bring in kind of like your kind of UK kind of background to to the whole thing and it's, people were appreciating it and if anything, it was giving you props. It's, it's who I am. It was, it, it it's, was giving you It's who I am. So it, it, the thing is, is that they, there's obviously times where it doesn't give me props. There's obviously times where people are like, oh, no, nah, no. Nah. obviously times where it be a bit, you know, ooh. but all in all, it yeah. probably made like my experience a lot easier than a lot of people there. Like, there's people I've spoken to afterwards they were like, oh, it was easy for you in school. They left you, they treated you nice because you're from London. <laughs> like, a lot of people said that to me before. But yeah. compared to someone that, like, like, compared to someone that's never been to school like that and mm. they just went in there like that, mm. it was the same experience. I think some people won't be able to handle it as well. Let's be real, some people won't. But when you get used to it and you get to the stride of it, yeah, you, you can. Nah, it's fine, man. It's fine. <laughs> like, people need to start worrying. Okay. I'm just oh, saying. All right. So okay. So fun. so the boarding school experience in yeah. Ghana is is not as crazy as what people make made it out to be. Oh, maybe it's crazy. maybe, maybe it's in the crazy. past. You know what? Okay, it's, it's crazy. It's changed. Okay. It's changed. It but it's changed. changed. Yeah. Do you think it's got better or it's got worse? Um. So what's funny? The last moment of Ghana. Yeah. yeah. I told the guy, look, take me to my school. Let me just go around and see him. Is it? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so, so I went in there. And when I, was this? When oh, was this? This is um last year. So 2019. Yeah, 2019. Um, oh. April. Okay. Yeah, and I just went there and I, I just see the kids from my dormitory yeah, just outside there yeah, sitting on the bench. Yeah. Yeah, and um, I just like I, just, I, I don't know. I said something to them. I was like, oh, what's going on? Like, just open the window, 
You're like, eh, hey, hey, give me money, give me money. Like, like it's like a, a busted joke, isn't it? And I'm just thinking, rah. It's still it's the, accent, the same. Yeah. Is it the accent? No, it's not the accent. Just the, the just, bants. They the, just know. They, when they say give me money, just they don't the really mean it. They just, yeah, they're just, they're yeah, just playing, yeah. isn't it? They're just, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. But they, they, they still... Like, they, it's the same. It's the you know same, what I mean? It's yeah. like... The essence is still yeah. there. It's like... They, yeah. like yeah, yeah. I, what I can see from them there is I can see the camaraderie mm. between the, between those kids that were there. Yeah. And the thing is that I see them and I see their kids, but when I was there, I thought, like, it, it didn't look like... You know what I mean? I didn't feel like everybody with kids. It was weird. And like, you can see that they're still having jokes. Like people do stuff like they're out there. Like probably people probably rapping and joking. And after some mm. people get basketball and play basketball out there, or some people get something to play football. Do you mm. know what I mean? Or they're just chatting or just you know talking about things or just you know like laughing at each other. Someone's like just joking on each other. Do you know what I mean? Teasing each other. And they're just doing the same things. Mm. And just seeing the vibe there, and seeing them kids doing it, I just thought, wow. <laughs> wow. It was so nostalgic because that like, things are just they're still the same, man. They're still the same, and it was it was it's good to see, man. It's okay, wow, okay. And yeah. um, what was your favorite experience about being in boarding school in Ghana? Would you say it's like pre pre? Would you say like it's like a different kind of uni experience because yeah. you're you're away from parents, everything. Very different to the uni experience. Mm. Um, in uni, yeah. You have student loan. Yeah, <laughs> you can work if you want. Mm-hmm. Like you, you, you have everything. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Whereas out there, like you have to fetch water. So okay, so it's one of those ones, yeah. Yeah, like you have okay. to. Like, okay. And I was on the third floor. <laughs> so if you imagine it, I remember when I first went there. The car- so did you have the? Um... Did you have dumb holes? Did have dumb holes? No, not have dumb holes. Like. No, my parents are old, isn't it? So, yeah. you know, my dad's old. So, mm. like, in his days, I don't think they had plastic buckets in their old school like that. So, they actually used the pans. So, right? he gave me a metal bucket. The pans. Was no, it the pans? No, it wasn't even a pan. It was just a metal bucket. Metal bucket. Yeah, wow. a bucket okay. metal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I'm out there carrying a metal bucket. Yeah. yeah. Three floors. A metal bucket. Don't get me wrong. It probably yeah. made me strong. Yeah. I was about to say that. Well, like, <laughs> we can't take those moments for granted, man. It yeah. probably made us strong. You know what I mean? After a while, I thought it was calm. I wasn't even complaining about it, you know. I thought this is just it. Like, it's okay. I, I, after a while, it started to become easier. I was actually becoming stronger. Mm. And a plastic bucket was nothing to me. Wow. But, like, that stuff, yeah. Like, you know, like it's not it's not easy, isn't it? Like, I'm, I'm going to keep it real. It's not it's easy. Not easy no. But the hardness, yeah, is... Like, I say, you talk about the best times, isn't it? Yeah. So, we used to do things like, um, it's like someone would have rice, okay? Yeah. Yeah. And like they'll put it in a big container, yeah, yeah. And they'll give it to like a master's wife or something like that, isn't it? Like yeah. one of the teachers' wives or something like that. Mm-hmm. And they'll cook the rice and put it in a container. And then what happens is everybody comes and they put some ingredients into this rice. Yeah. yeah. So you mix up the ingredients, yeah. You can't eat unless you contribute. Wow. So everyone will come and contribute. So someone might contribute some like meat, someone will contribute some whatever, you know, oh, okay, like shit or whatever. Yeah. So if you put it in, make a proper like, rice. rice. We used to call, yeah. it, we used to call it rice chill. Yeah, rice, rice, chill. rice chill. Yeah, make a rice. proper rice chill. And we'll all just sit down and eat together. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So they play like, if someone like, people used to like rig the light. Yeah. And they'll, they'll rig it and they'll put some wire into into like a radio. Yeah. And they'll play some music or something like that. Yeah. So we'll have music playing oh, whilst no we're way. eating rice, children, no you know what I mean? Yeah, like it was, we were very, we were very like, we were resourceful, man. Yeah, we could make yeah. anything from anything. Like it was just, it was just like that. That's like, the thing. Yeah, and it was, imagine. we lived on minimal budgets. See, that's the thing. Mm-hmm. That's the thing with boarding school in Ghana, like, you have to kind of improvise, don't you? You mm-hmm. to improvise what you have, and you know, once your chop box supply is gone, that's yeah. it. And unless you you able to get access to a shop, or unless you're or paying for a visit, you're paying for a visit. For a visit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm it's so special. That's oh my I've gosh, heard. I've yeah. always got visits here yeah, mm. at the right times. So I can't mm. so I got to see that um, after when I, when I got to school. So yeah, it it kind of changed me in a way. I started to like act. A bit more responsible because I'm mm. okay. I have to, you know what I mean. I have to, you know, like um, I'm, I'm, I'm like I come from a very, very big family, mm. very big family. Mm. My um, mum's father 
um, she had about 16 children. 16 yeah, children? Yeah, about 16. My gosh. Yeah. And my dad's father, he's in the late 20s. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, wow. Well, my, my, my mum's father was, um, the, he was a chief. So when he came to visit me, he had like all the like chief outfit or okay. came like, you know what I mean? with my aunties. Was and, it drawing a lot of attention? To ah, drew, drew, drew so many, so much attention. I didn't, I didn't Someone came, feel... people came for me immediately. But, <laughs> just, the just, yeah, yeah, they came for me immediately, oh, immediately. They were thinking, you know what, they were actually kind of pissed. Yeah. But I didn't know. Really I thought yeah. if anything, they'll be doing like, okay, let's, let's rob this guy. Yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, that, like that. But like, I didn't really care. Because okay. I'm just so proud. That oh, makes sense. Okay, so you're you're more kind of, you know, caught up in the in the proud moment than rather, yeah. like, rather than yeah. kind of worrying. Okay, what are these guys going to do to me as a yeah. result? Yeah, I wouldn't have been worried about that before it happened. Okay, but when it happened, when you're sitting down there and you had for so many weeks with no visits, yeah, and like <laughs> you, your chop box is almost empty, you know, <laughs> you're almost out of money, and yeah. like you're thinking, well, how am I going to survive the next few months? Yeah. yeah, then you get a visit from your granddad. In chief outfit, looking like a proper chief, like the my granddad's a shanty as well, mm. and that's like the only part of my family that's a shanty. Yeah, so it it, it just gave me a certain pride, and I just thought, wow, like do you know what I mean, wow, mm. I just thought, wow, and like um, it's the pride was so high that I didn't really care what anyone was gonna do to me after. All. I didn't really give a damn. Like if anyone came for me, I, I really just didn't care. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that's a good feeling. Yeah, you just kind of let it. You just let it all go at that point, yeah. Yeah. Wow. It was, okay. That was lovely. Um, yeah. but what do you call it? Um, mm. like that was a good moment. Um, but like um, who are so saying um, different things? So I got lots of events from other parts of my family and that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I haven't even said this. My my father is full fancy. Okay. So his dad was um his dad was a diplomat. Mm. So he was the ambassador for Ghana in Israel. Wow. And um, I think in China. China? Yeah. Oof. But I think it was just for um, the capital, Peking, Beijing at the time. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, but yeah, he, he was the ambassador there. <coughs> he, his brother as well, his twin brother, was the ambassador here. Mm. Yeah. He was, I think he was the first one. Um, but it wasn't like the Ghana, it was a Gold Coast ambassador, isn't Gold it? Gold Coast ambassador. Oh, so back, back when it was called the Gold Coast? Yeah, okay. before, like just before independence. Before, yeah, just before independence, yeah. yeah. So um, he, uh, was the flashing, was the flashing? Um, I think. It's a good thing. Flashing? I think it's been, it's been flashing for a time. Oh, okay. Well, Has it been flashing it for all this time? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, so yeah, he's, so. Let's, my, let's hold on, let me, let me double check. Okay, we're going to go with a little intermission. Hold on one second. <laughs> okay. One of the stories I was talking about with my grandfather's twin brother, yeah. yeah. Um, before he died, yeah, yeah. one thing he used to do, he used to call the house. Yeah. And um, when he called the house, yeah, these days we didn't have like the house phones where you like, you, do you know what I mean? Where, yeah. you, where you walk around the house with a house phone. There's a house phone where you have, it's got the wire yeah. and you have to stay by the phone when, when, in the answer, you know? Yeah. And, when he did this year, like he would be talking ages to the point where we're thinking, oh, <laughs> you, know, you have to get a seat. Do you know what yeah, mean? yeah. <laughs> but, no more of us. Yeah. Right then. Yeah. None of these. <laughs> yeah, none of those. Yeah. And I didn't understand the significance of what he was doing. Mm -hmm. He was actually telling me about like the founding of Ghana. He was telling me about Ghana. Like he was just he was telling me about family. He was telling me about everything. He was just trying to make sure that he was offloading all the knowledge that he mm -hmm. has onto me okay. and my, my, my siblings mm -hmm. and that was very valuable for me and I never understood the value until after he passed but that's an example of just like my upbringing when it comes to Ghana and the way in which I've always seen things in a mm -hmm. sense. Um, I didn't appreciate it at the time obviously yeah. but I, I would kill to have another conversation with him and to hear that again if that makes sense. Man. So it was that. Then um, my dad's, so that's my dad's family. Like, that's what yeah. they're like, isn't it? And mm. also, um, his, my dad's cousin as well. Wow. Is, um, my dad's cousin was, um, 
Um, Mugabe's first wife. No way. Yeah, his <laughs> first cousin. Wow. Yeah. Big man. So what's her name? Um, what's her name? Uh, Sally Hayfron. Sally Hayford. Hayfron. Hayfron. Oh, okay. So How there's many very wives political. did he have? Mugabe. Two. Two wives. Yeah. So okay. after she died. Okay. Um, in ninety two, mm. he got married to the latest wife. The latest wife. Yeah. Mm. He had. Mm-hmm. Wow. Oh, look up at that. Just read. Just oh. Look up at it later. We'll put this in the show notes, guys, so you guys can look up as well. Cool. Mad. Cool. Yeah. So that's why politically, that's why when I was, even when we were talking earlier about politics, mm. I've always grown up um, being aware of politics, and politics has always been something on my mind. It's always been something that I've studied. It's always been something that's been a conversation in my house. So, I pay attention to that. Like, right now, as Gardner is going into the, like, the election and that sort of stuff, yeah. I pay close attention to what's going on. And I feel like it is very exciting how people are very enthusiastic about the elections in Ghana right now. Mm-hmm. There are many other countries that have just had elections and are having elections, and we haven't heard anything mm-hmm. about it from the diaspora or anything like that. Yeah. But the Ghanaians are just talking about it on a constant basis. Like I get a message from my aunties and on a regular basis of different propaganda from each party. So, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's just yeah. funny. I think right now, um, I mean, as we're recording this in September 2020, uh, we're getting um, uh, clouded by you know, COVID-19 yeah. and the US elections. Yeah. What's happening over there? Yeah. And maybe, maybe a little bit of Brexit stuff here. Mm-hmm. quite recently which has emerged mm-hmm. um, so unless you're really on top of your Ghana, Ghana news or you're in Ghana at the moment you're not really going to get a lot of you know, the uh, Ghana election action because it's just so much distractions right now mm-hmm. going on mm-hmm. yeah um, well, it's true um, <laughs> that's very true but what I would say yeah, is um, on social media mm-hmm. I know a lot of people follow like Pulse Ghana and um, like BBC Pigeon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know that existed. That's, that's good. <laughs> it's alright. Yeah, BBC, yeah, BBC Pigeon. Pigeon. Is, that like a Twitter, is that like a Twitter account? No, it's an Instagram account. So they've got an oh, Instagram okay. account. Mm. They've got a Facebook account. Okay. They've got like, they've got a page. They've got an actual BBC page that's for Pigeon. Wow. Yeah, they're just that's, that's literally they just put Pigeon on it. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the reason why they have it is because What's weird is that? Who runs it? Nigeria, Ghana? Oh, obviously Nigeria. <laughs> of course, they're the kings of pigeon, right? Yeah, I know, but Ghana is... They're huge contributors. Mm. Huge contributors. That they, they talk about Ghanaian topics on a regular basis all the time. Um, but, like, um, yeah, where was I going with that? So, basically, yeah, in Ghana, yeah, like, when we're having conversation, even when I talk to my grandma, mm. like, I have to talk really slowly yeah, I or I have to break it into pigeon. Yeah. Or she won't understand what I'm saying. Same, yeah. Do you get what That's I mean? Because she's thing. old and her yeah. ears, you know what I mean? Like, I is, like, they understand pigeon more than they understand just, like, the regular English. If you're talking to the regular person, if you're talking to someone that, like, mm. travels a lot and, like, is really rich and that sort of stuff. Yeah. Really? Is yeah. your grandma Fanti? No, my grandma, my grandma, my fan, well, my dad's, your, your dad's two parents fancy. are both Fanti, isn't okay. But my mum's mum yeah. is in Zimmer. Okay. So Zimma is what, in Zimma is in what Amsterdam. region? What region is that from? So it's Western region Western still. Western region, okay. Um, but it's, Secondly, area. Yeah, but it's like it's further out. It's okay. like towards going to, more towards Ivory Coast. Ivory Coast, yeah. Yeah, that's where Agzim is actually where um, Kwame and Kruma is from. So Kwame okay. and Kruma is in Zimma as well. Okay. So in Zimma, I think I've heard nice. about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, um, yeah. it's still a can. It's still a can. Yeah. But it's not like a central a can tram. But it's okay. still a can tram. So the so the Zimma language is still similar to a can, but. It's still quite different. So, my grandma can speak it. My uncles and aunties from that side, they can all speak in the Zimmer, mm-hmm. like, well. And they're like, <laughs> cuss me, and they're like, hey, don't speak any of them. <laughs> but, <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I'll ever learn it. I'm not going to lie. I don't think it'll be useful to me. I think the main ones in Ghana is, 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 is a Santi tree, a Creopium tree, English, and yeah. then the Fanti, isn't it? Yeah. So I think those are really the I'll main say, like, say, Maybe Ewa. Yeah, I would say I would say just the two languages. Well, if you're known thing, it's probably the two languages that people just learn. Yeah, yeah I'm talking about elections and so for yeah. me, yeah, I don't for any party, I don't really support any party properly. Right now, I'd yeah. probably be tilting way more towards MPP because 
my uncle, um, he's currently an MP for second B. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You mentioned this. You actually mentioned this to me the other day, actually. And yeah. uh, basically, you're saying is that if if his party doesn't win, he's out of a job. Um, no, no, I wouldn't say necessarily. They, they lack. It's very likely he'll win his seat. It's, okay. it's, very, it's very likely. Mm. But it's just his seat. Like, obviously, he's, he's, trying, to, he's, to, he's trying to save his seat, isn't he? He's trying to save his seat, isn't he? Um, everyone is. Every <laughs> single, like, it's like, so even in the elections here, in all elections, like, um, every single MP, Yeah. so where we are right now, we're in Wembley, isn't it? So I think the MP okay. for here is either um, Dawn Butler or um, Barry Gardner. Okay, how do you know all the MPs, like... <laughs> I told are you, you, are you into politics? Yeah. Yeah. Not really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Like that. To know the local, I mean, I may know yeah. the local MP in my area, but I don't tend to know it for like every single council or every single. I, I, I know the local. MP wow. In my area. Okay. Okay. Man. I know the local MP in my old area. Like, that's you. That's yeah. you. That's you. Met them and all that. Stuff. It's weird, isn't it? It's weird. Isn't it? That's but yeah, happened. anyway, anyway, yeah, like, um, I'm just because I've got an interest in it too. Also, I also work in that I work for a public relations company, of course. Yeah, I, I start off working with a public relations company and they offer public affairs and that sort of stuff. Mm. So, you do come across people that are within politics and that are around politics and that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, it, 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 it keeps me abreast of what's going on, okay. Um I mean, it's, I mean, politics is always, it's, it's current affairs, isn't it? So, yeah, I mean, it, 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 yeah. I can see why there is a kind of overlap with of what course. you're doing. Of course, no, but um, I don't work in, I'm, I'm my, my personal, I, know, I don't work in public affairs. I know you don't. But in the public affairs departments, yeah, yeah that what they do is they help companies. Um, I, I don't want to explain what public affairs is, but no. I just advise people to look and invite and look at what public affairs is because okay. it just give people a whole different perspective of what politics is and what politics is for yeah so it will make you understand like the system in which that we live in yeah if that makes sense yeah and rather than like i don't know some people fight against it some people navigate with it but just i'd advise people to, to have a look at what public affairs is mm. okay well we'll leave that to the guests to to, to do that, I'll put that in the show notes and guess we'll have to. I mean, I mean, well, I'd say the guest, I mean, the audience. The audience. Well, there'll, there'll be a lot, there'll be a lot of things I'm going to say that people should look up to. But yeah, um, what were we, where were we? So we're talking about that. Um, yeah, so you're talking about, yeah, so we're talking about uh, politics in Ghana before we, we talked about politics in the UK. Mm. And then um, you were going for MP, MPP, right? Who's, who's the really. MPP? Is it MPP? Yeah, MPP is what do you call it? Um, Kofu Adam. Kofu Adam. Kofu Adam. Kofu Adam. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that, that's his party, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. And, and before, one, NDC. before it was Kofu. That's Kofu's party. No, no. We, Kofu was N- MPP. Was the MPP? Yeah. And and what and what's uh, Kofu Adam? Adam? No, Kofu Adam was um, MPP too. Okay, but but Kofu was he was NDC, was he? No, nah, but he was right. MPP as well. Yeah, yeah. So he's, he's from the same party. He was, yeah, yeah. They're both the same. Kind yeah, of same party as Kofu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, cool. What do you think about Harlem, man? I mean, I heard he's trying. He's trying to come back, isn't he? Yeah. Um, because like yeah, the, yeah, obviously they had the reputation they called him Mr. Dumso, yeah, <laughs> which means light off. By that's like, it. Yeah. yeah, but like that's it. He did do a lot of inf- like he did build a lot of infrastructure around Ghana during his time. Like, yeah, um, Bahama. Yeah, like yeah. I think there was a lot of highways that were built over his time, wasn't mm. it? But when I went to Ghana and I saw like some of the highways, like, especially the one by Bawe and that sort of stuff, yeah, I just thought, wow, like this is this is different. Like yeah. it's different. But there were just some things that I just, that just didn't make sense. I don't like the Ghana highways because, like, especially when they put the zebra crossings. That's I was just most. about to say that. <laughs> I was literally just about to say that. When I said some things that didn't make sense, I was about to say, on the highways, there's zebra crossings. Yeah. Yeah. But what was meant to happen is they had someone, now this is likely, isn't it? I'm not saying it's true. Yeah. I'm not saying it's true, so that's I'm fine. not accusing anybody. But that's fine. Right. But it's likely that the budget that was given to them, mm-hmm. yeah, there was meant to be an overpass. Mm-hmm. But that money, someone took it, and pocketed it, and they just put a zebra crest in there. Instead. I mean, it's likely, isn't it? Likely. This is so bad, man. This is so <laughs> yeah, bad. Well, I'm glad you got this in video. I'm glad we're doing this video in season two so you can see my face. <laughs> this is a one. That's it. Well, this is absolutely not one. But I, I can't say it happens for sure. Gosh, you know? this this allegedly. Ghana infrastructure, that's another thing that we could talk about. Because mm-hmm. this is not the first time I've heard these stories, mm. right? 
you said, but yeah, this is what tends to happen in Ghana, ladies and gentlemen, for people that don't know. Uh, the Ghana government will put out a tender, a a uh, contractor will, will go forward, they will win the tender, and then rather and then what they will do is they get assigned to do X amount of work. They will only do maybe ten or twenty percent of the work mm. just to show they've done something, and then run and run away with the rest of the money. Mm. This is why Ghana is not where it used to be, especially maintenance, in the structure. Maintenance is terrible so Maintenance so bad. Yeah, bad so bad. But it, it presents an opportunity. Mm. If somebody can actually do maintenance, I talked to a friend about this. Yeah, yeah. And if someone can actually sort that out and do some kind of maintenance, especially yeah. for people who value maintenance. It could make money. It could make some serious money. Yeah. Serious money. Serious money, yeah. I'm not going to say what my friend's idea was, but oh, that's fine. That's like, fine. But yeah, keep, keep your friend's it, idea to, he, to, to yeah, yourself. He mentioned some things that were just really... <laughs> I thought, wow. If yeah. someone does that, they're going to make serious money. But it's coming back to what I was going to talk to you about, yeah, um, which is the African dream. Yeah. So what I see the African dream is, yeah, mm-hmm. so is go to Africa... Spot a problem, solve it, mm. and make a fortune doing it. Mm. That's what the African dream is in my head. Wow. Because there are so many problems that can be solved and you can make money solving those problems. Mm. Like I'm not saying there are there are bin men in Ghana, there are bin men that exist, yeah. But if somebody wants to make a premium bin removal company, yeah, and they had people on their list saying, look, let me go to your house, I'll clip your bins, just leave them outside, we've got them for you, every Wednesday, that's us, yeah. yeah. Someone created a business doing that, and then um, people paid them money whenever they did it, they would make a lot of money in Ghana, a lot of money. There is a, there is a bin collection um, yeah. service in Ghana. Yeah. I, I mean, get bin collection to my apartment. I get, yeah. Yeah, I get bin collection, yeah. Wow. But I mean, like a private one. Uh, okay, I mean, I think it is private, but it probably yeah, not. It's probably, probably not. It's probably not as. I mean, they're getting better actually, because yeah. they used to be quite bad. Like they used to like, you know, you know, not, not come on a regular basis or not come on time, whatever. But yeah, yeah there's actually yeah. I mean, you do have garden bin collection services out there. But it, could, it could be better. It yeah, be better. I'm not. The thing yeah. is that that's just an idea. That many ideas that I'll probably say okay. probably someone's already doing. Yeah, that that's just. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. If you're, you're not fast enough, if you're not fast enough, yeah, somebody will do it. That's it. Is yeah. that real? Yeah, I mean, what, what did my cousin teach me the other day? Um, there's a book. <laughs> it made me laugh, but I mean, he, he basically told me this quote. I went mad. I think, the, the, I think it's the fast eat the slow or something. <laughs> something like that. The fast eat the slow stuff. I can't remember. Mm. I'll find a few I'll send to you before. I'll put I'll put the link in the show notes, guys. I think it's called. I think the quote is. There's a book called. I think the fast eat the slow, something like that. The fast eat the slow. Eat the slow, yeah. Oh wow. Basically, just showing you, yeah, it's right. Yeah, it's that's a, even, that's really it's the next level. Point. <laughs> it's basically yeah. just, it's basically just, cute. just so, just, just telling you how if you don't, if you're not quick enough, mm. you will get defeated by competition. Yeah, essentially, that's what we need to know. It's the, yeah, it's the, it's the fastest wins. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the fastest, the first one in wins, and hands the, down. Another conversation I was having here. Um, a lot of the reason why Ghana is in a way it is, is because the stakes that people have in certain things. Yeah. So, for example, yeah, like Ghana's very privatised, isn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, when it comes to a bus system, yeah, yeah, like they tried the bus system, yeah, and it didn't really work, yeah, because mm-hmm. people just get the chores instead. Okay. Oh, you mean the okay? So, are we talking about the um the green Chinese buses or? Um, I'm, I'm, at one point, the, when I was younger, the state they had buses that. like the from not the Trotros, um, Trotros. Right, STC. They're, yeah, not not STC. Okay, okay. Oh, right. So oh. you're talking about the, no, the no, coaches. No, no. So I'm talking, talking about coaches. both. I'm talking about STC. Okay. And Trotros, because all right, the average Ghanaian on a day to day, yeah, the way they travel around Ghana. Yeah. If they were, I'm not talking about rich people, I'm talking about just the average normal person. They're taking those trotters. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That, that's how they'll get to and for work. Because yeah. trotters will get you there quickly. They will drive over the gutter. They'll drive wherever, they'll drive over the thing, they'll break all the laws. <laughs> I, love, I love the chaos of trotters. Have you sat on a trotter before? Have you? Yeah, I have. 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 I have
Now, because I, I, I was prideful. I was. I, I was, was prideful. prideful. I was prideful. <laughs> I was definitely. But then prideful. my my dad yeah. made me get on a trotch and say, Adrian or yeah. Papa, yeah. you have to learn how to get a trotch and yeah. take it yourself yeah. because you know X Y Z. Yeah. And at first, I was my like, mum What that. I need this for? But then yeah. I I don't. When I look back, I'm so grateful. Yeah. Because now I'm allowed to kind of like navigate. Yeah. Like, I cry if I needed to. Yeah. Not that if, I, yeah, I can't remember last time. Yeah. yeah. Not that I want to. If this was a last, if it was a last resort. Yeah. I mean, it's an option. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and I've done it before. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's an option for me. Now, yeah. later on, there was a point. There was a point where I thought I'm not touching. I'm not getting on a trotter. I'm not doing. <laughs> like I know exactly what you mean, but yeah. I had after to be in one yet. I'm like, even when I was on it, yeah, my knees were like, <laughs> like, like I couldn't even fit. Because you're tall. Because yeah. you're tall, yeah. I'm, I'm tall. I'm not that tall. Yeah. But if I was I mean, really tall, yeah, tall, yeah tall. that would have been mad. Yeah. But it was. Now, like, when I say I'm not that tall, I mean like in a sense that like, come on, man, like, how can you be that small? Like, how, how can you get me some leg room in there? Because yeah. you, know I mean? you know, I mean, with Ghanaian men, typically, uh, then the national Ghanaian men tend to come across a bit short. Yeah. You know what I mean, I think our average height in Ghana maybe like five seven or something. You know what I mean? Because yeah. we can be quite short. Ghana is not like it's tall. True. We're not really that tall. It's it's average. True. So it's true. But it's yeah, like I don't want to talk about trotters like um like talking about trotters like there's some what do you call it um some museum experience here. Yeah, makes yeah. us feel it makes us sound so spoiled. But <laughs> but I mean it's it's but it's it's, 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 a, it's, it's, it's it's a cra. Yeah. I mean it's, it's part yeah. of what makes a cra. You know what I mean? It's like, true. Chores, chores. I mean, I tell you one thing though. Yeah, yeah that is it's funny true. about me. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, yeah, I would avoid Makala and Kineshi Market at all costs. I would avoid what that. right now or just in general? No, right now. Now, right, right, where right. I am now, that's something that's a bit bougie about me at this moment. Time. My my mum was at Makala a couple of days ago. Why yeah. right now? I just don't like them. It's just too much. It just who who's them? I don't like the, the markets. Oh, the markets. Oh, yeah, okay. like the, market. the market chaos is too much. Yeah, yeah it's too much. Okay. It's have you, but have you learned how to adapt to the macro? The macro market experience, guys. If you're not going to macro market, like obviously you need to experience it. Yeah, it's a chaos. It's, it's a nice, a lot. it's a beautiful chaos. When, like, when, I, when I was younger, but you have to be careful because yeah. there's quick, there's quick pocket pickpocket. Pockets in there and stuff like that. All of that. All of that. Yeah. When I was younger, yeah, like it was okay. Like I'll be taken by my auntie and my uncle, and I follow them. We'll go and do the stuff, and I see them do their thing. Yeah. And I'm just a kid, isn't it? It's like, it's, you know what I mean? Yeah. But now, like, it's different. I remember, like, when I went, I took an STC, mm-hmm. or I think STC or VIP, yeah. <laughs> and it took me back, yeah. Okay. And I was in Kaneshi Market, yeah. Okay. At night. Yeah. Which is not far from where Bosuyoka, yeah, and like the area, yeah, like at night you could just see like people still selling things and that sort of stuff, yeah. And there's huge rats, yeah, that go down like the the gutters. It's just ah, oh, I'm just looking at it thinking, okay. and then the noise, okay. like the person they go that right, that right, that right, that right, that right, that right. I'm thinking. Really don't want to be here right now. You're just there, like, this is just metal. And you're so <laughs> tired from sitting yeah. in that bus that the whole time. It's just like, yeah. this is just not, this yeah. is not an experience. It's not yeah. nice. But at the same time, I say it's not nice yet. It's an experience that everybody has to go through. It's experience, man. You, you, you have to. It's necessary, man. It's necessary. You, if you, you want to feel experience. like you're, if you want to call yourself a true Ghanaian, you have to be you have to. to. But yeah. go on, try, try. Yeah. You know, do if you go to Macklemore Market, you know, things like that, things mm-hmm. that the average Ghanaian does, you need to be able to do those for to truly call yourself a Ghanaian. 100%. 100%. But I will avoid it if I, I have to. That's the point. I'm Fair making. enough. Yeah. If I have Fair to, enough. I yeah. If I don't have to avoid it, yeah. if I have to do it, yeah. it's not, it's, it's on the table, isn't it? It's yeah. not something I, I'm it's not going to do. To do. Yeah. yeah, it's not something that, that I'm going to be like, I'm not doing it. No. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I'm not too big. I'm not too good for it. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. But, if I if I can get around it, <laughs> yeah. Makala is, uh, is, is is definitely something else. I mean, the chaos is, is wonderful, but you need to be careful that obviously no one next snips your money or mm. or anything like that. Cool. It's quite funny because you all get people trying to sell like really really sell to you. Mm-hmm. You thought I mean we could talk about street hawkers in a bit. Um, you know, I, I always come back to this article I wrote about street hawkers how like they're back is against the wall mm. when they're trying to sell because they're, mm. they're fighting for their lives. <laughs> but when you go to Macklemore Market, yeah. you meet more than street hawkers. You meet people that are really, 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 really trying to push 
because you could be in the same area and there's all these people saying they're sending the same stuff to you yeah. they all come up to you mm. and then literally like you go to this person and then you see their product and then maybe they don't have the price you want and you go to the other person mm -hmm. And then while you're talking to other person, those guys will come over to you and be trying to sell you. Yeah. The same thing. <laughs> uh, please like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. Uh, if you're listening on the podcast platforms, be sure to leave us a review. Thank you so much for listening to the sound of a crowd. See you next time. Bye bye.